This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Welcome to Belgium, and we're in Stavelo this weekend, a town that dates back to the year 648, and together with nearby Malmö, they formed a Christian state ruled by a Prince Abbot that stayed autonomous for over a thousand years. On the fourth Sunday of Lent, the celebration of Blanc Moussy. This is a tradition that goes back to 1502. The monks weren't allowed to take part, so the locals dressed up instead, and the white costumes can be found all over the town. In 1977, another town became part of Stavelo, and that's where we are this weekend for our racing. It's the 12 hours of Spa-Francorchamps. We are in Belgium. We are at the circuit of Spa-Francorchamps for the Hankook 12 hours of Spa. It's the second race for the European season, and this is a legendary circuit with action. Uh, join us. Everything will happen here. Not every team had a good start to the weekend. During free practice, not everything has gone well. We have a, a, a big crash at the uh, Redillon and uh, the mechanical uh, have uh, doing a very good job during the night to repair it. And the color is uh, just uh, the fun color for, uh, for the race. And uh, very thanks to, many thanks to the whole, uh, whole team for uh, this job. Okay, we have a, a bad, bad accident, a crash in a hush. I push a little bit more than the, the tires, uh, okay. The car couldn't be repaired, but the team will start with a replacement car. The car was actually coming from Barcelona because we had the last few days the Porsche Super Cup test down there, the official test. So this was... Uh, the problem because the trucks was on the way from Barcelona up here, the car was delivered 2 o'clock by night and the mechanics was working since then all night long because you have to change a lot of things from the Super Cup to the Creventic Series reglementation and uh, we are back in the race. In qualifying, car number 709 is forced to stop due to technical issues. Uh, I just lose before the corner here, I lose all my oil pressure, but I don't lose oil, so I think the belt of our dry sump pump is gone, or get, get lost of the engine. Still, this is the place that you want to race. Yeah, it stays the, the most crazy truck, let's say what I drove. Uh, it goes up, downhill, so this is... This is also a hard track to race on. So there's plenty of action expected this weekend. Two divisions in this race, and the GT pole is claimed by the number 11 Ferrari. It was really good. We had a clean lap, uh, perfect lap. The car was really, really good, and and so uh, I did my best, and uh, was the first pole of of the year. In the other category, TCE, the pole goes to the number 101 Cupra. Uh, it's always hard to to try to put your best uh, lap. Uh, but I think we managed pretty well and we got pole. We're getting ready to go racing and on the starting grid, well, we meet all sorts. Before, at Nicolo, at Nicolo's time, we go all the youngs, go with this mask and, and, and the veil and, and bells. He goes boom, boom, boom. And we, we know that, but the number 666 is the name of the devil, that's it. So what can we expect? I expect the battles on every classes. It is very tight again. Uh, it's a long circuit, seven kilometers. Everything can happen here. Well, pole position. Not bad for the first time with the new car. The car is uh, working really well. We try to get on the podium. That's what we try. Let's keep going. 
keep going and do the best we can. I mean, I think if you keep going and you, you don't get into trouble, you'll get a result. So it'd be nice to try and win our class. We have a really good driver lineup this time, so we are all more or less on the same level and we hope that we can do best. And it's also a saying if the weekend starts really badly, it just can go better and mostly it works out like that. So. Uh, we have to see, it's hard with all the different drivers and different teams. Uh, we will find out in the race. I think we, are pr we have a pretty strong lineup and we are aiming to, to get the win. The pace car heads into the pits. The field come through the final part of the bus stop chicane. They're lined up to start the first four hours of the Hankook 12 hours of Spa Francorchamps. The race is on and already a battle for first position. The 25 Winwood Racing AMG fighting the pole sitter to head the field. But that number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari holds on to the lead. Oh, it was very good. Uh, it was a little crowded, of course, as it is always, but uh, everything went smooth. No touching, uh, no accident. So I think the field got uh, very well on the way. Behind the two leaders, the battle for third position, for now at least, still in the hands of the WRT Audi. It was a nice, a nice group. Um, with the Ferrari of Praha over there, then the Manfilter, me, then I think behind me was Robert Reinauer, uh, and then um, the, the grass of um, Lamborghini came. So it was fun out there. And I mean, Spa is also a great track, great fun. Of course, there are two categories racing this weekend. The red Ferrari leading the GTs as the Touring Car Endurance Series heads to the line to get their 12 hours of Spa underway. Orange Red Cooper of Red Camel charges away from the field, capitalising on the pole position. Behind that number 101, the battles for position have already started. It's the 188 Audi that runs second. Peter Hardman has also had a good start. The start was good, the lights came on, obviously everybody goes, you know, lads pass before the start line. But I got a good run into turn one and then everybody kind of all falls over themselves a bit down the hill towards um, Eau Rouge. So I just wait, just let, you know, lift off a little bit, wait for everybody to get fall over themselves, and then went flat through Eau Rouge. Well, not flat, but near enough. And you get a really good run up the hill. So I got one car up the hill, and we were doing really well. Early caller to the pits, the number 105 Volkswagen of GSR Motorsport. They've got problems with their gearbox. And the Intersport BMW, after its good start, it's not so good now. Yeah, going up Raddy on there, we just lost all the power. And it just appears the fly-by-wire fly throttlers failed. So we had no throttle. Um, so I tried to roll back, but I couldn't get back. It was ticking over, but it wouldn't run on tick over all the way back here. So I had to pull off before the end of the first lap. Once the Code 60 is over, we're back in a great battle for first position in the touring car class. But I can, I can keep in touch with him and push a little bit on pressure and he make a mistake in the, in the entry of the double left. So I can overtake him. And afterwards, I, I was really building my gap and um, and helping from uh, from the traffic also a little bit not so tight in the gt category the number 11 ferrari has pulled away from the competition the number 105 car is back on track but as we can see the problems with their gearbox have not been completely solved we later then recognized that there was a software problem and uh, to the downshift there was some <laughs> rev limiters and we adapted our uh, how to say shifting of the gears to that that we shifting with lower revs after adapting that we quite well went well the gsr volkswagen is back on its way but now the gt race leader is in the pit lane we have a puncture so we need to stop uh, there is something on the track i don't know why but the the rear, the rear right tyre, we have a problem with the rear right tyre uh, and for the moment we keep going. And for added excitement, the CWS Ginetta. Um, well, we had a little problem. Um, a uh, Ferrari decides to drive in the side of my car so hard that it broke the front suspension and then we had to try and limp the car back to the um, garages here. And uh, the um, tyre was shaving all its rubber off against the bodywork. Uh, I had to end up pulling it up by a fire marshal, then put, they put the fire out, then drove the car on again back to the, to the pits here, and then we repaired it and the car's back out. But there was still fire when the car came into the pits. No, that, that's people thinking it was. It's uh, people panicking. Uh, I wouldn't have brought a fire into a pit lane. Um, there was big clumps of rubber down on the exhaust, and so um, 
just that was very easy to put out, just pick it out and job done. As Colin mentioned, it took the team about an hour, but the car was able to rejoin the race. As we look back through these TV highlight shows, we do see most of the major incidents, but really, and for most teams, things are going well. And any incidents, we hope, are minor. We, we had a good race, so but after one hour and I think 40 minutes, I had a little contact with the EDEC Mercedes. Uh, he touched me on the right rear and I turned myself, So, uh, but uh, that's racing, so it's uh, just a normal race incident. The Porsche number 903 gets itself out of the gravel. I uh, did a big driving mistake. It was some overtaking of a slower car and uh, it was me and an, uh, another cup car and we go off race line in the dirt and I, I was braking absolutely too late in the dirt and uh, have no chance to stop the car. But yeah, it was a super big mistake for myself that I did so. The team repair the minor damage with a bit of duct tape and the car is still in the race for the trophy in the 991 class. Here's the standings after two hours of racing. Each class is just as important in the 24-hour series, so if you look to the right column, you'll see the top three in each of the individual classes. GRT Grasser Racing Lamborghini number 63 leads the GT division by eight seconds over the Ferrari number 11 for Bohemia Energy. Six seconds further back, the first of the A6 AM class competitors, that's the number 22 Wachenspiegel Team Monschau Ferrari. In the TCE race, it's the 112 Volkswagen, which has a 1 minute 46 second lead over second place. Red Camel Jordan NL, the 101 Cupra, has a 19 second gap back to third place. That's the number 188 from AC Motorsport with their Audi. This is Endurance. Well, for us, it's all a big. Uh Teamwork, you know, you have to organize your pit crew, you have to organize your strategic guy, your race engineer, and uh, you have to have your team in good mood. So, all together, that's endurance for us. There are few tracks in the world that fire the imagination of drivers to an extent as here at Circuit Spa-Francorchamps. What a wonderful track, the sun shines here, and I think it's one of the best tracks in the world. Having the ability to go up Eau Rouge is such an honor, and the car absolutely fantastic around there. Poo on a downhill corner, absolutely on the limit, the car's sliding, and the smile on your face is absolutely fantastic. It's a wonderful track, and also wonderful installations, and uh, I'm impressed. I, I met um, last year here, but uh, I'm enjoying a lot because I have spent more time here and uh, well, I'm very happy. It's, uh, it's a wonderful track. It's uh, a real driver's track. We have beautiful weather, great cars on the track, so I think uh, we have a good weekend. Yeah, if you know it goes all time down, uphill, so it's never flat. Uh, if you think on the radio, it's yeah, the most crazy corridor in the world, let's say. Yeah. Spa-Francorchamps wants to be known as the temple of endurance racing, not just for cars, but for motorcycles as well. And that means investing a lot to create the ideal conditions for competition. A lot of projects coming. Uh, one of them is just growing at the entrance of the circuit. Uh, this is for the World Championship of, uh, of Rally Cross, uh, 11th and 10th of May uh, coming. Uh, and here, we, as well sports-wise, we want to create a new experience for the fans. Uh, so there will be music, food and beer festival, drift, you can test a car on the normal track and then you can go to the stadium to watch the race. So I think we need to move on to the way we, as circuit, see the future. During this very special year for the track, there'll be a lot available for visitors to experience. It's uh, for the celebration of the century of the circuit. We're going to have big helmets, one per decade. And uh, every inside and outside there will be a story with the digital technology. Uh, and uh, we will transport our fans as well through uh, to two to four hours walk within the forest and they can learn about the, the history of the, and the memories of the circuit. Who matter you are, who, who influenced, who built the track, what was the problem, the federation, the safety, the 
drivers, the teams, the promoters. We're going to talk about all of this through images, through videos, through 3D, through virtual augmented reality. So that's coming soon. The competition isn't only on the track. The team needs to keep an eye out for the tactics and techniques that the other teams are using. Uh, yes, of course, because we we lose a little bit time on the first pit stop, so I was uh, I was a bit concerned and and look and uh, compare to the others. Yeah, of course, it's competition, and and it's not only on the track; it's also in the pits. We've had a few cars coming in with punctures. Some of that is down to debris on the track and the aggressive curbs here at Spa, but of course the setup of the car also plays its part. Yeah, we had to reduce the camber because of the punctures. Um, so the car is not set up 100% well, but it's, it's still very drivable and the car is running well apart from those punctures, but now it's running well for the last uh, two hours. And um, I mean, there's still about eight and a half hours to go. If you abuse the tyres, the consequences can be severe, as Sven van Laar finds out. Well, I was going, uh, coming out of La Source, going full speed uh, direction uh, Orouge, and unfortunately I had an expl exploding tyre on, uh, on the left-hand backside, and the car stepped out on it. It was no holding on the car. The team had a look at it, but the car is too, too much damaged, so it's over for us, going home and uh, maybe next race. After the long winter, Spa-Francorchamps is enjoying fabulous weather, but the track itself is still cold. I was out with uh, new tyres, so they were uh, not on temperature when I started, so I spent two and a half laps uh, getting in them up on, on temperature, taking it easy, and uh, I thought by now they should be with a bit of grip, which was not the case. I uh, crashed the car today, that should never happen, of course. Getting close to the end of the first day of racing, but the EDEC Sport number 17 would finish a little earlier than expected. We were uh, first, and uh, the car was uh, incredible. Um, a very beautiful setup, and uh, we were uh, very fast. But um, we had a problem uh, maybe uh, 30 minutes uh, before the checkered flag, a big problem. And uh, in the front of the car, we, um, we break uh, um, a piece of, uh, of the car uh, just uh, beside the wheel. The number 188 Audi from AC Motorsports leads the TCR class, but it's still not quite as fast as they'd hoped. To be fair, I would have liked to have gone a lot faster in the car, but we did have a, uh, we were at the end of our cycle on the rear tyres, so we had very little rear grip. Um, but it was comparable with everybody else in the same car, in the same class, so we, we have to take that. Because of their early gearbox problems, the GSR Motorsport number 105 is bringing up the rear of the field of the TCR class, but they're still enjoying their racing. You know, it's a dream, actually, a dream come true to drive on this track. In the racing, not not in kind of uh, track track days conditions or something. So it uh, makes much more thrill, you know, uh, seeing all these GT3 cars and so on. It's really amazing. It's a two-part race, four hours on Friday, eight hours on Saturday, and those first four hours have been completed. The intermediate checkered flag comes out, and first to see it, the number 11 Ferrari. Let's take some time to reflect on the race so far. Yeah, last stint was very great. We had a very long stint, but a great car. And I think at the end, I, uh, I'm, we are on piece three in the class, and I think for the first day, it's all fine. Um, at the end of the day, obviously, it was getting dusk. Everybody was trying to figure out what to do with fuel strategy. So we were actually running a lean map and trying to get good fuel mileage and uh, to, to stretch it to the end. No final results yet decided, of course, but it's a good time to have a look at how it stands after the first third of the race. Part two of the race tomorrow, we'll have seven pole sitters, one for each of the classes. And in GT, the Bohemia Energy Ferrari number 11 will lead the 63 Lamborghini from GRT Grasser away. Now, time differences disappear for the restart, so those two cars will be side by side. Third position, the number 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche, and that lap difference will remain. In the TCE race, all of the top three are still on the same lap. The number 188 AC Motorsport Audi, the number 112 Autorama Volkswagen, and the Volkswagen from Holmgard will all restart the race tomorrow as first, second and third. The rest of the top seven all have a lap each over the car directly in front of them on the grid. We get a derogation of the organisation to, to pick up another car, so we went uh, home, take up uh, another car and uh, we can start tomorrow for eight hours.
The cars stand untouched in Park Fermi overnight, waiting for their teams to return. However, some of the teams have decided they needed to work on their car. Yeah, we decided to uh, bring it in and uh, have a 10, 10 lap penalty, just check through the car because we've been hit and hitting the suspension. I want to make sure that's safe for eight hours today. And so we worked on it last night, got it all nice and put a new front bumper on and made it look pretty. Others have decided to live with the minor issues from Friday, like a broken stabiliser. Well, it will cost more time and we don't really have time. I mean, if we go into the pit and uh, put a new stabby on, then we will lose probably a lap or half a lap and we cannot afford it at the moment. So we will just keep it like it is and it's drivable, so we are OK with it. It's a new day and we're getting ready for the second leg. We still have uh, about eight hours to go. What we saw yesterday is that the teams are trying to stay in the lead lap, so don't lose any time. Um, and today, I think the first, maybe the first rounds, we, we already will see um, which car doesn't have much fuel in it and has to go very fast to the fuel station. Today we can start off the 11th place, but it's a little bit uh, hard thinking because some cars needs to fuel as well so I think in about three hours we're going to see the the end result already. Currently we are second in M class so it's okay we are still in the same lap with the leader in our class so everything is um, yeah now on zero point. Robert apparently went for a beer even before the race finished last night. The and there are leading. the class leaders. Oh no we are leading. Ah right. I was not I was I haven't known this. Yeah, it's a surprise now. We are first in our class. Uh, I was not driving in the end, so I couldn't follow everything. Uh, that's fine, so everything is in our hand. With the race about to start, heading the field, the number 11 Ferrari of Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha. We start from, from the pole, uh, but still eight hours, and also the, the Lambo is really strong, so we never know. We just to push and do our best, and then this evening we'll see. As both the GT and the TCE fields are on their way, one car is out of the lineup. Peter Terting noticed problems with the number 980 MRS GT Racing Porsche when he came out of Park Fermi. This morning we had no brake at all, so we couldn't, we even couldn't, we even had no brake to go into the grid, and then it makes no sense. It's a safety issue, of course, so we pulled the, power, the car back into the pit, uh, changed the brake pipe, did the bleeding, and then we continued. Just like Friday, the GT cars are at the front and come to the end of their warm-up laps. They're ready to recommence the battle for the Hankook 24-hour GT Endurance Series. The lights are off and the field spreads out over the full width of the main straight. Everyone trying to gain a position in the early running before the first corner. The Paul City Ferrari holds on to its lead and the whole field follows neatly through La Source. No incidents. But you still have to remember, the track is very cold. Yeah, we started with the very old tyres of yesterday. And at the beginning it was very slippery. And I spun in turn four, I think. And um, then I have to get past all the other cars. And uh, at the end, we did a good first stint. And uh, overall, we are still fine. Meanwhile, the TCE race is about to restart this Hankook 12 hours of Spa. Just like the GT grid, the TCE entries are starting their second day of racing, trying to gain positions. The orange number 101 Cooper from Red Camel has a good start, moving up from fourth, and they come out of that first corner in second place. The pressure kept on the leading Audi, and a fight that AC Motorsport would ultimately lose. I made a little mistake on breaking into Les Combes, so... Um Broadcast overtake me by the outside and break very late and make the corner. But to avoid the contact with him, I have to to steer my car more than necessary, and I lost the back of the car, so I spun. The GR Motorsport BMW number 202 is into the pits. They have decided to work on the damage that they incurred yesterday. Yes, we broke the front splitter, and we don't have uh, any downforce. So, uh, yeah, you just keep pushing and then the tyres in, uh, in the front, they are like half, half an hour drive, they are finished. Uh, that it's a new bumper, it's, it's, it takes too long. So we have to do it with uh, yeah, what we have now. The bus stop chicane is tough at the best of times, as Frederic Angsel can vouch for. <laughs> yeah, I was pushing, pushing. I, I bumped in a vibreur and uh, the car got turned. 
and I try to 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 fit it straight right, but there is no, so I turn in the other wells. Uh, then when we came into the bus stop, I was already alongside him, and actually in front of him for the right-hander. But then for the left hand, he just closed the door on me and uh, spun him around. So, uh, you know, there's nothing I can do. Um, it sucks for both of us. We had damage from the car and they, they spun out. So uh, there was no point. The number 102 is currently leading the TCE series, but not for long. We had gearbox failure when I was in the car. And uh, I was driving uh, towards uh, Blanchimont and uh, suddenly it uh, popped out of gear. Uh, luckily, I was uh, able to just uh, roll towards the pit entry, and uh, now we have a new gearbox on the way in. But the race is over for us. So, in a perfect world, the race would be incident and accident-free. Sadly, though, it's not a perfect world. One of the Porsche Cup cars decided, uh, you know, he was going to make a move on me in turn one, and you know, kind of misjudged it and misjudged uh, where I was, and you know, hit me in the rear, and uh, you know, ended up breaking a bunch of suspension components. So, maybe I'll. He didn't saw me, and uh, maybe I'm doing a little bit uh, wrong maneuver that is not predicted by them on for me. And we have different trajectories, so uh, we cre uh, we make an accident in the apex point. So it's sad. The GTL Racing Audi has had a good stint, but they've managed to get in trouble in the pit lane. I think we was in P3 or P4 when I came in uh, and I jumped out of the car and a new driver came in. The crew was uh, trying to fix the belt for him and somebody accidentally pushed the fire extinguisher so it emptied uh, the fire extinguisher in the car and in the, in the hood so uh, we needed to, to wash out everything and we lost uh, over half an hour now. So Proof as if it was needed that pretty much anything can happen in endurance racing. Half the race done, here are the standings. Two hours down on this second day of racing in the Hankook 12 Hours of Spa. The GRT Grasser number 63 Lamborghini has retaken the lead. The Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari is in second place. With the Herbeth Motorsport number 91 Porsche, the highest placed A6 AM competitor is only 22 seconds away from the Ferrari in third. In the FIA sanctioned 24 hour touring car endurance series, the Autorama number 112 Volkswagen is leading. To marginal lead though, the number 188 Audi from AC Motorsport is only three seconds behind. The Red Camel Cupra number 101, that's now two laps further down. This is endurance. Uh, it's the team, it's a team effort. It's not only driving the car on the, on the track, uh, it's, a, it's really a team effort between the engineer and the mechanics and the driver, of course. It's always like that. Yeah, if, you, if you don't have a team spirit in endurance, it's, it's not possible to do good results, for sure. Creventic Series has built a reputation on welcoming teams, drivers and spectators to their events. They're just as welcoming to media that come to any of the races. And many love following the series wherever it goes. Well, I, I love photography and I love motion and emotion and uh, motorsport is all, all that in, uh, in one, one sport. It's a, a really endurance series, so it's a lot of work to do over 12 or 24 hours. And that's a special kind of uh, motorsport, I think. It's uh, the main thing, it's the endurance and the, the nice places too. And the, the racetracks are great. Some teams even have their own camera crew with them, like Hoffer, who bring along race-media.tv. Over the years, all the races are special. Um, so I think there is no uh, special point to say this was uh, every time when my own customer team is winning, the class are all over uh, winning, it makes you happy and um, it's, uh, it's a special moment. The series also attracts TV and internet shows, making documentaries of drivers or teams. So we're following a uh, driver, uh, Stein Schotthorst, who's uh, racing with the uh, WRT, I believe. And uh, yeah, we follow every single step he makes uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, and what it, yeah, what it is to drive, but also a lot behind the scene uh, footage. So the, the stuff you normally don't see on TV. So what do they think of these creventic events? This vibe on this circuit is really different.
different with the vibe at DTM. It's really relaxed and that's nice. The vibe is so good, but it can also be the weather is good and then the people are good, but the vibe is awesome. Drivers often get media asking them about their race. They mostly don't seem to mind. Oh, the media is absolutely Fantastic great. <laughs> Yeah, they're absolutely great. <laughs> <laughs> so a variety of ways to keep informed about Creventic events, like this show you're watching now, for instance, which is available to TV stations around the world. Uh, we are on the second position, uh, about 50 seconds uh, behind the Herbert Motorsport. It's hour seven of racing in the Hankook 12 hours of spa Francorchamps with GT and TCE cars battling for positions in their classes. This part of the race hasn't started well for the number 685 Peugeot from Dan Agro Racing. Uh, the tyres was a little colder than I anticipated with a full tank of fuel. So um, I overshot it at the top of the roofs and ended up with a soft touch on the tyre on the wall. So that was okay, but I got extremely good support from the marshals. I have to say thank you for that to the marshals. They really helped me back on the track again, so uh, I could continue very soon after. Uh, you can, you, if you look at the car, we have got a little bit of lipstick, we call it, on the right side of the car, so otherwise there was no damage to the car. At the head of the field, the battle is between the Czech-run Ferrari and the Austrian-run Lamborghini. Uh, that was a nice fight. I'm feeling that the race circuit is for me much better than the last year. I learned some new tricks in the corner, so I'm quicker than the last year. And uh, I could also fight with the good uh, drivers here on the racetrack. Stefano Constantini has just lost the GT lead, but gets it back, even though the Bohemia Ferrari and the GRT Lamborghini have touched. But the number 63 won't stay in first position for long. During my stint, uh, I was uh, in first position overall, and uh, another slow car, uh, one BMW, uh, close me and touched me the uh, rear posterior wheels. And uh, I think that uh, the other driver didn't see uh, the mirror and uh, close me and touched me and uh, broke my car and uh, lost uh, maybe 10 laps. Zorg Rensport are a regular competitor in the 24-hour series, and they're here in Spa too. Uh, unfortunately, Aarhus uh, took another victim. Um, the car got uh, kicked on the um, entering uh, curb on the left side, um, so the, the, the rear turned around and uh, the car was parked backwards. It's definitely repairable, but not uh, today and here. The number 112 running second is trying to pass the leading number 188 Audi. Well, just for now, those positions aren't changing. It's tight in GT as well. CP Motorsport trying to regain time that they lost earlier. As the track got warmer, I did spin the car once very lightly, and it cost us 20 seconds, which is something we need right now because we're in a really good uh, race with the 34 car and the 41 cars. Quick and efficient pit stops are essential if you want to win, but the Synchro number 676 needs more than just regular attention. Uh, Strategy-wise, it was going well, and uh, the pit stops have been almost perfect, And but unfortunately we had a small connector issue on the ECU, and that lost us 30 minutes in the box, has put us from P1 back to P3, but we're catching now. And in pit 33, the CWS Ginetta number 378 is being worked on. I had a little spin in, uh, in La Source, and um, I don't know if that's the cause, but uh, that second lap, we started losing fifth gear. And uh, so brought it back in, and fifth gear and sixth gear are gone, but uh, we're doing a gear gearbox swap. So we're hoping, uh, hoping to still make a podium and make the finish. Rodrigue Gion moved his race seat this year into an Aston Martin Vantage, and he's enjoying being in this number one car run by Pro Sport Performance. The car is very, very perfect. Last year, I drove with Porsche, but it's very different because Porsche is, uh, uh, we go on the fault uh, very quickly. If we turtle too much or uh, we break too late, uh, the Aston we can do, the, we can do that. Uh, but after we control very good the car. It's been a hard race for Rinaldi Racing, and once again they're off track. 
as you've seen, we seem to be struggling a bit with tyres. Uh, the whole team keeps getting punctures. Uh, I think this is our third puncture today. So, uh, yeah, not sure exactly what's going on, but uh, we're certainly having a lot of difficulty. So let's have a look at those who do still have a chance to win. Changes in the top three with the A6 Am team of Herbeth Motorsport now leading overall in the GT division. Their number 91 Porsche has a lap advantage over the number 11 Ferrari from Bohemia Energy. New to the top three, the Phoenix Racing number five, three different brands of cars, all with a lap between them. In the TCE division, all three class leaders are in the top nine. The leader of the TCR class and therefore the overall TCE leader is the number 112 from Autorama. They have a lap advantage over the 101 of Red Camel. Third overall is the 188 Audi from AC Motorsport. The Hankook 24-hour series travels the world, staging 12 and 24-hour races on demanding and exciting tracks. But that's not all series organisers Creventic do. In conjunction with TCR, they've organised the TCR Middle East series. And now those two organisations are working together on the Spa 500. People know where we have already a long time the TCR class in our 24-hour uh, series. So now we will have in, uh, in October a TCR Spa 500, which means 500 laps uh, with only TCR cars. And we expect uh, it's, it's a kind of legend, legendary uh, touring car adventure and touring car uh, racing. The circuit is very happy to host this race. I think it's good because it's going to be a good challenge, good fight. Uh, and it's tourism, uh, so it's very important for us. It's a new product and we have to... There's a lot of customers that bought those cars and I think it's interesting to... Uh, we follow the manufacturers, but we follow the promoters as well. The Spa 500 will have a totally different atmosphere from the 24-hour series races. This will be a major event with lots of entertainment. A lot of teams already uh, preparing. At the moment, we have something like 30 entries already, very international. And the, pe the team see this as a big opportunity to invite guests, put up their VIP hops hospitalities and to promote uh, their team. Yeah, we have a, a big Formula One lodge in uh, the paddock. Yeah, and uh, with uh, DG, DG on board uh, camera. And uh, we, uh, we offer uh, the possibility to our guests uh, to uh, to take a shuttle for see on the different uh, corner, yeah, and uh, to to see inside uh, what, what is uh, endurance. There's a lot of things to do. All manufacturers will become here with their with their uh, usual street cars. So it's a big event also for spectators and for the for the teams. And race week will spill over into the surrounding area. Yes, I think there is a parade in Malmedy. Uh, we want to activate a lot of uh, clubs to come around with manufacturers. And I think it will be a, a very good for the, for the locals uh, and animation within the Malmedy town. There's already a healthy entry from teams and drivers and plenty more who are still thinking about it. Some who normally drive in the GT series. Yeah, we had talked about it to try to maybe join the team for the race. So we will see because I'm really impressed with the TCR car. They are going really, really quick in the cornering. So they're great cars. Of course, we're thinking about it. I think it's fun. I look at it, the, the, the program, so I'm asking my teammates, see whether they can do that with just all TCR. But TCR is a really fun car to drive. It will be one of our biggest events this year. So uh, we are already preparing the plans for that weekend, um, contacting the drivers. So. Uh, yeah, we are looking forward to it and uh, uh, we are sure that we will have a good car and uh, a good driver lineup. It's important for teams and drivers to know there's still time to enter and run here at Spa day and night. Yeah, the TCR Spa 500, 500 laps will be 4 to 6 October this year. Remember the number 602? The car has come to a halt on the main street, almost opposite their pit. Yes, yes. Uh, shame we couldn't get the car over the wall or something. It would have been much, much faster. But uh, we had a small electrical issue. Uh, it was very random, so I was just coming out of the last corner and the car just shut off. Um, I think it was in a short circuit. Or I don't know exactly. And then we were able to restart it once the car got towed back in the pits. So, um, yeah, a bit unfortunate, but nothing major. So. The number 105 GSR Motorsport Volkswagen stopped yesterday. They did get it going, but they never really found out what caused the car to stop in the first place. So today, the car restarted the second part of the race 
and the hope was the problem had solved itself. Two stints was okay, but on the third stint, there was Vitanis driving, and uh, again, the same problem. And uh, then we understand we cannot go to the end of the race without uh, checking everything for the ground. So we stopped in the garage, spent about 40 minutes, I think, something like that. So everything lost everything, but now car functioning normally and we're just trying to get to the finish. The number 27 reduces its deficit to the number 11 Ferrari to just four laps. Still leading the GT race, the Herbeth Motorsport number 91. Meanwhile, Stefan Yusyong just finished his stint in the Peugeot number 685. Yeah, we had a, a few moments where the brake paddle going to the floor, so that was quite scary. But uh, I think actually back then uh, I was having a few sectors where I uh, braking a lot and I could also see now that they are really, really hot, but uh, it's only that one time. So I have driven about uh, four laps after and there was nothing, so I don't know, but uh, it's, it's working now. Smoke from the GDL Audi. There's a vibration in the back and uh, some smoke, so we're going to check the uh, suspension. I don't think there's, there's anything serious, but I came in just, uh, they asked me to come in just to check because um, you, there, was coming, there was smoke coming, I had already stopped, and it kept on happening, so I, I'm not sure what, what's wrong. A racing car should be the perfect working environment for its driver. If something is forgotten, it all becomes much harder. I have some problem with my seat, as I forgot to put in uh, the pillow. So I have some neck problems at the moment, but it's okay. Driving the car is, is very easy. So for a while it's much easier than the Porsche. Normally I drive only Porsche. Uh, but uh, it's much easier to drive. The number 85 from CP Racing is third in the A6 Am class. Behind them on track, but a lap ahead and second in A6 Am is the number 34 from Car Collection Motorsport. But it looks like the number 85 team are about to get a little bit of unexpected help. That'll help us just a bit. Yeah, they just came in with a, with a puncture. So there have been a lot of them. That can happen to anybody. There have been a lot of them here, probably because this is such a high-speed track and it's so hard on tires. The number 378 CWS Janetta has not had a lot of good luck this weekend. Today, it was coming down with a camel straight, all of a sudden we turned in, uh, the dashboard flashed to neutral, there's no drive at all on the car. I'm pleading with the marshals, please, 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 get a tow truck for me. There's a code 60, come on, you can tow me back. And then, like, those moments uh, of emotion in your life when you're a racing car driver, and all of a sudden you see the code 60 board going out, and you're going, wow, is that for me? Is that for me? Are they going to tell me back? Can we get back to the pits? Will we fix it? Will the boys get another go? Can they drive the car? And yes, even though I'd gone to a point of safety where the race director could have left me there all race, Creventix helped me, got the car back to the pits, the mechanics fixed the car, and we're back out again. And in the tradition of Creventic racing, it doesn't take that long for the field to go back to green flag racing. The fight's really on now. Only two hours left. Two hours to go, and it's still the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche that leads the GT division. The A6 Am leader has left the A6 Procast behind. The leading pro entry is the second place Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari. Still in third, the number five Phoenix Racing Audi. All of the top six positions now have laps between them. Perhaps we're seeing a clue as to how the result may be at the end of the race. No luxury of a lap in hand for the leader in the TCE division. The 112 Autorama Volkswagen defending from the 101 Red Camel Cupra. Just seven seconds between them. In third, it's still the AC Motorsport number 188 Audi, a lap behind. This is Endurance. The organization is very nice, it's very good, the concept is great. The idea of driving with amateur drivers along the pros uh, and helping them become better drivers, and uh, it, it's just a very good concept. I'm definitely available for more of this because I really enjoy it. It's only possible to go racing thanks to the fact that many people spend their free time at weekends at tracks like this. Top of that list, the marshals. Yeah, they do a terrific job. Uh, we need to respect them so much because we're going to find the people who are so passionate and help us all the way through. 
So without the marshals, we cannot race. We need to respect them so, so much because they help us all the way through the 12 hour races. So yes, a lot of respect for them. Some marshals have been on post for over 30 years. What brings them back? Because I like it. Well, I do like mechanic and I do like to help people. So that's why I'm, do, I'm doing this. It's my hobby. And also ch sharing times with some friends. There's no substitute for experience, but essential knowledge is passed on to new generations. We train new marshals, trying to learn them the spirit and also how to work as safe as possible. To get them in their minds that our job is quite dangerous. It's important to say drivers do appreciate the marshal's dedication. Oh, the marshal was fantastic, really helpful. The tow truck was brilliant. Coventix is great. And they actually want you to race, want you to be on track and want you to enjoy yourself. And everyone's really friendly. So why wouldn't I be happy with that? Absolutely. I mean, the, uh, the marshals are key and it's an amazing job that they do. So very important. Otherwise, I would not have been able to get back out. So they were very responsive. Um, and, you know, they pulled the tractor out quickly instead of putting it on a flatbed. I was able to return to the circuit fairly quickly. Um, so, uh, yeah, immensely grateful to those guys who quickly jumped the fence and, and helped me out. They are extremely important. And they, in this case, they were extremely helpful. So I very much appreciate that. It's not just about being on post next to the track. There's work to be done in the pit lane too. Here you are more be between the people, that's more exciting. If you there come a broken car, you can see it. You can see a change of pilot, change of tires, you see a lot. And you, you are with a team, even in a group, and you see team, you, you see a lot of people. Rules allow up to five drivers per team. And cars this weekend that are running with just two, we don't often see is two drivers in the same car at the same time although in spirit at least that's exactly what's happening in the Modena number 916 that's my brother's 10 grand of ashes and uh, he passed away last October 28th and he didn't have uh, complete his dream come here to race in Spa uh, so therefore I'm bringing his 10 grand of his ashes to with me and racing with me inside my racing suit Wayne was a regular driver in the series Imola last year was the final race in which he competed and he was third in the TCE series. The AC Motorsport number 188 Audi is trying to get back on the lead lap in TCE. Yeah, it was, was funny. I saw him in the mirrors and he was fighting really hard. Um, then I let him pass and uh, yeah, he destroyed his tyres behind the Porsche and it was fun to, to go back on, on the front position then. TCE cars battling away. The 101 uses a gap to the right of traffic, but the number 112 gets stuck behind a Porsche. Uh, yeah, it was really fun. Uh, I had new tyres. Uh, the pace was really good. Yeah, I could catch up and uh, I, I, I could immediately pass them. The pace we had was, uh, was much better and uh, they were in traffic at that moment. So, yeah, I, I didn't really have to battle that much. The Phoenix Racing Audi has had a steady run and has been holding third for the last couple of hours. Yeah, we had some bad luck in the beginning with two punctures, but we fight back and we have been P2. But then we had again some problems with uh, the code 60. We didn't match it at the right time, so we lost a lap. And now we are at P3. But I think we have still good chances to stay on the podium. Further problems for the Rinaldi number 47. They can't keep the tyres underneath the car. So the team have decided to call it a day for both of their entries. We decided to retire the 22 because um, for safety reasons, uh, because we have to find out, uh, find out uh, which problems we have with the tires and um, we retire. The GRT entry is proving they've got a good all-round car. They're staying ahead of the leading Ferrari, but the chances that the Lamborghini will end up on the podium are slim. We stay in uh, fourth position uh, of Pro Car. And, uh, but uh, lost uh, about uh, six laps from uh, the third position. And uh, it's very hard for us now. Getting close to the finish flag now. And WRT have problems getting their Audi out of the pit lane. We had a planned pit stop for fuel. And then the car just stopped, the screen went black. The car stopped, no power, no drive, nothing. We found out it was the power box, we had to replace it. And after that, I could continue, but we lost. I'm not sure, but I think somewhere between 10 and 12 minutes 
A driver who does see this race as a present is Stefan Pala. It's an important day for him anyway. Yes, it's my birthday. So I hope to finish to the podium, but it's magic for uh, the battle during uh, 50, 50 uh, 20 minutes, I don't know. It's a very intensive uh, battle and uh, fantastic. Is that a sport and uh, that's why uh, we we enjoy your endurance, yeah. The Herbert Motorsport number 91 is still leading. It's got a little lead over the number 11 Ferrari, but the Porsche needs a splash of fuel to ensure it can complete the last couple of laps. The team have worked out they have got the gap needed to do this last stop, but the Ferrari, of course, is pushing as hard as possible to close that gap down. So how close is this A6 Pro car to overtaking the race-leading A6 arm machine. There's the Porsche number 91 rejoining the track on the right-hand side. Can it stay ahead? Can it stay ahead? Oh, the Bohemia Energy Ferrari has taken over the lead. Yes, yes, it has taken over the lead. Oh, what a disappointment for the German team. Herbeth have lost the first position with just minutes to go. And Matteo Monicelli is pushing the Ferrari and extending that new lead. Close racing in GT and in TCE positions one and two on the same lap. The number 101 Red Camel Cupra leads, but we're hearing they'll have a time penalty. That will be assessed at the end of the race. Now, they're a minute ahead of the Autorama number 112. So, as long as they don't have any issues, they should still be able to take the race win. 12 hours of entertainment. The chequered flag is about to come out. And it is the Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari that crosses the finish line first, just ahead of the Herbert Porsche number 91. An exciting finish to the Hankook 12 Hours of Spa. The Czech Bohemia Energy team are overjoyed. It was really hard, really tough, and we are really happy. Yes, I try 110%, uh, but it was really tough, and I'm really happy. The Herbert number 91 didn't get the overall victory, but Ralph Bourne is still happy with the win in the A6 AM class. It's fine to be uh, on the top of the steps, even uh, more fine here in Spa. That's very special. It's a, it's a famous track and we are happy that the team did uh, such a great job for us. Thank you to the team. A great run into the top three, rather stealthily done by the Phoenix number five Audi. Oh, it was uh, amazing. I mean, it was a very long stint. We did a splash and dash in the end, so the tires uh, were a big trouble for us, but we could manage it and we're all happy, I think. The TC top three had to work hard until the chequered flag to reach their podium spots. We didn't know if uh, Autorama need to stop. Uh, finally, they did. So uh, then I know I could save a little bit more, but also we had some penalties, which we're not sure how it would work out. So I kept on pushing to the end. We tried to make the right strategy to get up there uh, and try to keep some good lap times. That was the way we tried, but we couldn't manage. So we are really on the limit with the brakes. And, uh... It was not really, really enjoyable, <laughs> but uh, bring, car, bring the car home, I think it's a good reward, reward for the team. 12 hours is about 43,000 seconds, but less than eight seconds that divide the GT leaders at the end of the race. Bohemia Energy finished on the top step of the podium, 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche, second position for them. Third step of the podium, Phoenix Racing and their number five Audi. In the TCE division, the gaps are a little larger. Red Camel Jordans NL 101 Cupra takes the trophy home for first position. A lap ahead of the number 112 Volkswagen of Autorama. A lap further back in third, the 188 Audi from AC Motorsport. Just as important, the class winners. The overall winner, Bohemia Energy, takes the win in the A6 Pro Class. Second overall is the winner in the A6 Am Class. That went to Herbert Motorsport. SPX was won by the number 202 BMW from JR Motorsport. The 991 Class winners, Modena Motorsport, take the trophy in memory of Wayne Shen. In the TCE classes, the overall winner, the 101 Red Camel Jordans, take the top step for TCR. In the SP3 class, Pro Sport Performance drove their number one Aston Martin to the class win. And Dan Agro Racing proudly take the trophy for the victory in A3.
Oh. Endurance racing is unpredictable right up to the very moment the chequered flag drops. We proved that once again here at Spa. The overall lead changed hands in the last few laps and 7.8 seconds was the slim margin of victory. Next up, over the 24th and 25th of May, will be in Brno for the epilogue. Be there as a spectator or as a competitor. All the info you need is at www.24hseries.com.